to you all our online worshippers this morning from Kilfenan and Bakra Mason and anyone else beside. We give you a very warm welcome on this Sunday morning as you join us for worship. And as we come to worship, we're going to read a few verses from the book of Revelation, chapter 21. And here the Apostle John writes, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And death shall be no more, neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. We're going to praise God in an opening praise led by Kilfellan Choir, uh, Psalm 84, How Lovely Is Your Dwelling Place. Then there will be an opening prayer by an elder in Kilfellan, Johnny Montgomery. And following that will be a Bible reading from Mrs. Elizabeth Osborne. And then there'll be a children's dress from Emma Johnson based on God's love. And then there'll be the children's praise which is hallelujah for God's love.
let us pray. Loving Heavenly Father, as we come together to worship you, not in your house, but in our own homes, we thank you that you have promised that where two or three are gathered, then you are in our midst. Lord, we welcome you amongst us today and celebrate the precious gift of life that you have bestowed upon each of us. Lord, we pray that you will open our ears so that we may hear your voice, open our minds so that we may receive your eternal wisdom, open our spirits so that we may know your leading and guidance, open our hearts so that we may receive your wonderful love, and we pray that we will feel your presence with us today and every day. Lord, we need you in our lives. Your love and faithfulness endures forever. Even in these uncertain times, we are assured of your constant love. We thank you for all that you provide for us. We thank you for our loved ones, our homes and food on our tables. Lord, we are so thankful for all you do for us each and every day. Help us to care and respect the earth and all the wonderful creations that you have blessed us with. We thank you for the technology that has allowed us to worship you in our own homes over the last few months and we thank you for those who have made it possible. As we start to come out of lockdown, we pray for your protection. Help us to be patient and kind as we get used to our new normal. We pray for guidance and direction for those who have decisions to make. Help us to adhere to these guidelines for our own safety and the safety of others. We pray for Graham as he continues to lead us and for the Kurt Sessions, committees and congregations of Macra Mason and Kilfenan and pray that we will soon be able to meet safely again to worship and praise you. Lord, we thank you that you sent your precious Son who died on the cross to forgive our sins so that someday we will have everlasting life with you in heaven. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Today's reading is from Psalm 84. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may have her young, a place near your altar. Lord Almighty, my King and my God, blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The autumn rain also cover it with pools. They go from strength to strength, Till each appears before God in Zion. Hear my prayer, Lord God Almighty. Listen to me, God of Jacob. Look on our shield, O God. Look with favour on your anointed one. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favour and honour. No good thing does he withhold from those whose way of life is blameless. Lord Almighty, blessed is the one who trusts in you. Amen. Good morning, boys and girls. Um, I hope you're all staying safe and you're enjoying yourselves. Um, I miss seeing you so much at church. But until we're able to go back to seeing each other again in church, which is hopefully soon, um, it's so great that you're able to tune in with us for our online service today. Um, so today we're going to be thinking a little bit about God's love. Um, but before we think about that, I've got a question. And my question for you today is, what is your favourite sport? What do you enjoy doing? And as I let you like process what you're thinking about saying, I'm imagining that some people are saying that they love playing football or they love playing rugby or they love playing tennis, cricket, hockey, rounders. And I'm sure the list can go on and on and on. 
But for me, I would say that my favourite sport is hockey. And today I've got a hockey ball. And this, I didn't bring my stick because it's a little bit too big. But this hockey ball is what? Something, it's small, but I love using it. And I'm sure that many of you said football was your favourite. So I've brought a football as well. And this is just a football. I don't know what kind of football it is. But there's two things that I love about this ball. And the first thing is that it doesn't have an end. So if I bring my finger around the ball, it just keeps going and going and going. And it never stops. But if I take this rope, it has a clear beginning and an end. But the ball doesn't. And so I want us to think about how is this ball like God and God's love. And so this ball never ends. It just keeps going and going and going. And that's exactly like God's love. God's love never, ever ends. It goes on and on and on. He will always love us no matter what. He loves each and every one of us. There's no end and it just keeps going and going. Boys and girls, isn't that just amazing? Like someone can love us so much that it will never end. It's endless. And so the second thing that I like about this ball is that we can share it. So if I took this rope and I said, boys and girls, with this small piece of rope, go and share it and do something with your friends. I can't really imagine that you're going to have a lot of things to do with it. And so compared to the ball, there is so many ways that we can play with our friends with this ball. We can share it. And how is that like God? And this is like God because God shares his love with everyone. It's not just me and it's not just you. It's everyone, all his children. And we are to share God's love with everyone as well. In the Bible, God calls us to be disciples. And that just simply means that he wants us to share his love for each and every person to all our friends, our family and those people we meet. And in the Bible, um, I've got my Bible here, so I'm going to read the verse from it. In the Psalms, there's a little verse that really, really reminds me about this. And it's found in Psalm 100, verse 5. And in fact, it's actually the last verse of Psalm 100. And it says, For the Lord is good, his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. And boys and girls, that simply just means that God loves us and it will never end. He will love all the generations of the people to come. And boys and girls, that means that he loves your grannies and grandas. He loves your mummies and daddies. He loves you, your siblings. He loves everyone to come in the future and he loves everyone in the past. And isn't that just amazing? So today I just want you to remember that the next time that you see a ball, that you'll remember that this reminds you of God. And you can explain that to your friends, that you the ball doesn't have an end and it doesn't have a beginning. And that is just like God's love. God's love doesn't have a starting point and an ending point. It continues for all time. And also that we can share God's love the same way that we can share a ball and that we can go and teach others um, how much God loves them and that his love's for everyone. It's not just for one individual. And so that is our story for today. Um, and we're just gonna pray to finish. So if we all close our eyes and bow our heads. Dear Lord, I just pray for this lovely time together in the service for the children. Um, I wanna thank you um, that you love each and every one of us, Lord, and that your love never ends. And I just want you to be with the boys and girls this week. Um, and maybe they'll go and share your love with someone, Lord, that you would be with them. 
and I just want to thank you for this. Amen. Well, thanks to Terry and the choir for leading us in worship, to Johnny for the opening prayer, Elizabeth for the Bible reading, and well done to Emma for bringing that children's address. A few announcements at this stage. Do you remember the evening service tonight is up in Brady Cricket Club? And again, we're thankful to the members of the Cricket Club for allowing us the use of their ground. There's a drive-in church there beginning at 6.30 this evening. There's plenty of space and we ask you as you come just to simply stay in your car and enjoy the service. We're looking forward to a couple of girls, Leah and Anna Clements, are coming to sing a duet this evening. And then we're also looking forward to Mr. Nigel Kizik, who will be along to bring God's word this evening. So do invite others, please make it widely known, and do come along if you can this evening. Then into the week, the final little Facebook message, midweek message for this term will go out on Wednesday evening, and that will go out to probably around about half past six, seven o'clock on the Kilthelen and Mac Mason Facebook pages, and then that will be the final midweek message for the summertime as we go into the summer break. And uh, the Mac Mason folks are invited to join others for a, a prayer meeting on Wednesday at eight o'clock. And for the first time, we're going to join together with social distancing put in place. And we'd encourage you if you would like to come along to that. And then there will be a break in the prayer times again in the summer. So just really this Wednesday, you'll have that opportunity. And then uh, next Sunday, we're glad to announce here in Macra Mason that we are planning to reopen public worship with social distancing measures put in place. There's a letter that will go out to all the members of Macra Mason about this. And uh, well, we encourage you, if you can, to, to plan to come and to worship next Sunday at 11 a.m. And sessions both in Macra Mason and Cofena Met to consider the best way forward. And for Macra Mason, that's to begin the services now in July. And in Cofena, just to inform you, they have planned to begin their services in August. So we're taking a staged approach, which is, we believe, right for each fellowship. And with regard to that, we do hope to have the service streamed online for the Kilfenon folks uh, next Sunday and for others who want to view online and perhaps feel anxious of, of coming out publicly just at this stage. And that stream will begin at 11 a.m. So just keep that in mind. There'll be nothing uh, from 10.30, but you'll have to wait until 11 o'clock uh, to join in with the, the live stream, God willing, next Sunday. And in time, the Confederate members will also receive letters and details about what's happening there on the ground in the, the future weeks. I think that's all uh, by way of announcement. And now we're going to have some prayers of intercession by another elder in the uh, Confederate, Mr. Campbell Bolton. And then we'll have a second Bible reading read by Karen Montgomery and the words of Jesus from Matthew chapter 10. And then we're going to praise and prayerfully consider the praise item, I need thee every hour, and make that a prayer as we come and we hear from God's word as we continue together this morning. Let us pray. Our loving Heavenly Father, we humbly come into your presence this morning, knowing that you are a holy God and that we are a fallen people who fall far short of what you require from us and let you down time after time. We acknowledge that we can only bring our prayers to you because of the death and resurrection of Jesus, which was the ultimate atonement and sacrifice and expression of your amazing love for us. We pray today for all who have been affected by the coronavirus pandemic, especially all those who have been bereaved as a result of this. May they all know your close presence with them at this time and your everlasting arms around them. Many others are also mourning the death of loved ones today as a result of road accidents in recent days, farm accidents in North Antrim and near Londonderry, drownings at the Antrim coast and in Donegal, and even terrorism in Reading, where three families have been plunged into despair. Not all of these are known to us, 
but they are known to you, and we bring them to you this day, praying that you will comfort them and give them the courage they need at this time. We remember also all those who are ill or in hospital and pray that you will be alongside them and add your healing touch to the work of the doctors and nurses who care for them. We ask for your blessing and care for all who work in our hospitals and care homes. Protect them from harm or infection as they seek to look after those under their care. We pray for the elderly people who are more susceptible to this infection and are isolated from their families at this time. Would you draw very close to them and give them the assurance of your love for them and peace of mind and spirit. We pray for those who have been unemployed as a result of this situation and also for those who are fearful of this prospect and the loss of income. As businesses struggle to cope with the changed circumstances, we remember the owners and managers who have to deal with the stresses of the situation. May they be aware that you care for them and may they turn to you for comfort at this time. We also bring to you our children and young people who are missing their education due to the closure of schools and colleges. Help them to take advantage of any online lessons or help which is available and help the teachers to develop new ways to provide teaching by using the internet, which is such a blessing in this situation. We also include the parents who carry out the added burden of providing homeschooling and pray that you will speak into that situation to encourage them and give them the patience and strength which they require. We thank you for our health service and for the gradual reduction in infection rates from week to week and pray that this will continue until this virus is eradicated. We also express our gratitude for the progress which has been made in treatment and pray that further research into a vaccine will be successful. Your word tells us that if we humble ourselves and repent, you will show mercy and heal the land. How our land needs healing at present, and we humbly ask that you will pour out your Holy Spirit and that people may realise their need to repent and turn to you, seeking your forgiveness and mercy. It is our prayer that the Church, in all its diversity, may be salt and light, and have the courage to speak the truth of the Gospel at every level of society. We thank you for our ministers and leaders, and pray your blessing on them, as they seek to find new ways to communicate the good news of Jesus to their congregations, and to the wider community through electronic media. We ask your blessing on all our politicians and the members of government, both at local level and national level. May they seek your guidance and help with the difficult decisions which they have to take each day. And may those whose job it is to advise them have the wisdom they require to provide good and appropriate advice to our leaders. We pray for peace in our streets and throughout the land. We long to live in a land where every life will matter, including the life of the unborn, and we are appalled at the legislation passed in Westminster regarding abortion. We feel powerless to change this, and we pray that our local elected leaders will have the courage to speak the truth in Parliament regarding this issue. We ask for your help with this and that this law <coughs> may be repealed and the rights of the unborn restored. Above the noise of protest, we pray that the good news of the gospel may be heard bringing a message of hope, peace, forgiveness and salvation through faith in Jesus. And what we pray for our own land, we also pray for all lands and nations, that peace justice and equality may reign in all the world. These prayers and requests we bring in the name of Jesus our Lord, 
who died on the cross, so that by trusting in him, we can escape the consequences of our sin and have eternal life with you in heaven. Amen. Matthew chapter 10, verses 26 to 33. So do not be afraid of them, for there is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed, or hidden that will not be made known. What I tell you in the dark, speak in the daylight. What is whispered in your ear, proclaim from the roofs. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground outside your father's care. And even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Whoever acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before others, I will disown before my Father in heaven. like thine can be so for I need thee oh I need thee every hour I need thee oh bless me now my Savior I come to Fonder, we've all heard that saying. 
when you don't have something for a while or perhaps you take something for granted, you miss it after a while. I have a friend who lives now for the last number of years over in America and he misses potato, cheese and onion crisps, soda farms and potato bread, Northern Ireland delicacies. And so whenever he's home, that's some of the first things that he would go to. Those that he misses, absence makes the heart grow fonder. For many of us, we've missed meeting with, with families and we thank the Lord that we are now able to come together and meet up again. And over those weeks and months of lockdown, it was difficult for many of us as families not to be able to meet with our loved ones. And so again, absence makes the heart grow fonder. And then particularly for us as God's people, it's been difficult that we have not been able to come into our meeting houses and to praise and worship God and meet together. And we trust that as we now plan to, to open our churches over these weeks, that indeed that we will, will come and we will come with a, a renewed thankfulness to the Lord and that we can begin to meet together. And so here the psalmist reminds us here in this lovely psalm, verse 1, as he remembers the, the dwelling place of the Lord of hosts and how his soul is longing and fainting for the courts of the Lord. And we can say that I trust as we wait on until our times of worship corporately begin. Psalm 84 is split up into three stanzas and I'm just going to look at the first stanza from verse 1 to 4 this morning and then God willing come back to look at the other two stanzas next Sunday. Each of the stanzas ends with a little word Selah and it's like a little musical expression or crescendo of praise we might say and this is a beautiful psalm. Psalm 84 is well, well known to all of us I'm sure. Charles Haddon Spurgeon said of Psalm 84, this is one of the choicest psalms in the collection. It is one of the sweetest psalms of peace. And here it, it tells us in the title that the, the psalm is written by the sons of Korah. And there's a longing after the, the, the Lord's house. And uh, who were the, the Korahites? Well, they were of the branch of the tribe of Levi. And they were chosen to be the doorkeepers of the tabernacle, or we might say the caretakers of the temple. And uh, it tells us in 1 Chronicles chapter 26 that these gatekeepers were men of great ability. They had strength to do the work assigned to them. The point of the teaching of 1 Chronicles chapter 26 is that it is God who, who appoints particular people as gatekeepers and caretakers in his temple and how they are honoured, the, the Korahites took great honour in their service of the Lord, in this job that they've been given by the Lord. And so the sons of Korah in writing and indeed singing Psalm 84, they're expressing their untold joy and what we might call their labour of love for the Lord. I wonder if you're asked when you're younger of the job that you would want to do in future or young people looking on and you're asked what might you want to do in the future. Some of you might be receiving GCSE results or A-level results. I wonder would you say, well, I want to be a caretaker. It's probably not the first job title that might come to, to your mind. But every business, every building and every school requires the services of diligent caretakers. Without caretakers, our building simply would not function. Often they are there first thing in the morning and the last thing in the evening. They open up and close. They tidy up and they clean. They fix the problems that come up along the way. And there's somebody often to talk to. I remember we had a caretaker in the primary school in the Christie called Danny. And uh, he did the crossing and he did all sorts of jobs around the school. But often he was there and he had a, a smile on his face and he was stopped and, and talked to you and cheered you up along your day. We can often take them for granted. But every church building needs a caretaker. And we thank the Lord God for them. We thank the Lord for the diligent work of Paddy and Macra Mason and Hazel in Kilfenan. And you do a great job. And we're thankful for the Lord for you. And of course, 
we can say we're even more grateful as our church fellowships come together and there's increased cleaning needed and cleansing and we thank God again for this. The Bible commentator and preacher of a past generation, Donald Gray Barnhouse, comments, God is interested in the simplest tasks of the simplest men and women. It might not be those of great learning, but individuals who have a heart for serving God practically that the Lord sets his favour on. Remember the, <coughs> the early disciples in the book of Acts, it says that the ruling council, the Jewish ruling council of the Sanhedrin, as, as they were cross of the disciples and of them preaching Christ, it tells us in Acts 4, they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and they perceived that they were unlearned and ordinary men. And it says they marveled and they recognized that they had been with Jesus. And so the Korahites here of Psalm 84, their job may have seemed menial and perhaps unimpressive compared to others in their locality, but what joy and privilege they saw in simply doing it, for they were doing it as unto the Lord. And so they could sing in verse 1, How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts to me. The Korahite choir they could have sang together as they worked diligently through the temple. Initially, we might think that this psalm suggests that these Korahites, they were unable to attend the tabernacle for a time, and that's why their heart was longing for that time. Indeed, just as our hearts have been longing for corporate worship in these months of COVID-19 and lockdown. But there are Bible commentators who suggest, no, it wasn't that they were away from the temple, but indeed, they, they, they loved their work so much and the calling that was upon their lives and it was a deeper than, than, than being in the, in the temple or in the tabernacle. But indeed, as it tells us here, that their souls, they, they fainted and uh, they, they cried out, their heart and flesh, they cried not just for the courts of the Lord, the Lord but for the living God himself. And this was the deeper desire of the Korahites was for God himself. And I want to ask a question this morning to you. Is God himself enough? <clears throat> we know it's God's presence that makes the feast. Whether for some of you, you, you remain at home, and I know some of you will have to remain shielding for another few weeks and you won't be able to come out, and, and we understand, but whether we're, we're still at home or whether we have the opportunity of corporate worship or whether it's in the car at the driving church, it's the Lord's presence that makes the feast. The question we ask ourselves, why do we want to return to corporate worship? Is it just to say that we're back up and running? Is it just for mere entertainment? Or is it just because that was part of our routine or perhaps just to get back into busy programs for our children? Or merely it's just a feel-good factor that we are able to, to meet friends. And, and each of these, of course, has their place. But primarily, it should be for, for God alone, for God's glory alone that we seek to meet together. And if it's not for this reason, we must ask, why would we bother? In my mind came the thoughts of the Lord Jesus Christ warning to the church in Sardis in Revelation chapter 3, where Jesus says, I know your works, that you have a name, that you are alive. Here's Jesus addressing this particular church. Outwardly all seemed good. There was probably a great church fellowship and lots of activity and loads going on for all ages and perhaps it was the church and the place to, to be seen uh, there. But Jesus has a strong word for this particular fellowship. He says, yes, you have a name that you're alive, but you are dead. Spiritually dead, he's speaking of. Jesus says, be watchful and strengthen the things that remain. And that are ready to die, for I have not found your works perfect before God. And, and Jesus calls them to repent, or, or he would remove the, the candlestick. 
I wonder how much in our churches would continue from week to week without the direction and the aid of the power of the Holy Spirit of God. Sometimes we love to be busy for busyness sake. But surely lockdown has taught us that not all busyness is profitable even in our church lives. And there are different ways of working. The scripture reminds us and Jesus says, without me you can do nothing unless the Lord builds a house we labour in vain. And it's the Lord who has stopped everything over these months. And we have missed the usual means of spiritual substance of coming together for worship on a Sunday. But is God asking the question during this time, am I enough? Whether at home or as we resume worship together in our meeting houses, as we seek to go forward slowly and decisively, seeking God's glory alone. And as we return to worship, might we have done away with the, the lesser things, perhaps those things that make us unnecessarily busy, and let's give our priority to the, the vital things that give God the glory. The preaching of his word, the place of prayer and outreach to all around in our communities. Indeed, as Karen read earlier in Matthew chapter 10, Jesus says that we should proclaim and seek to proclaim the good news about the kingdom of God from the very rooftops. We shouldn't be ashamed of Christ. We shouldn't fear man, but indeed we should fear God. Jesus says, remember that passage, he said, Do not fear those who kill the body and cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both the body and the soul in hell. This is what the early church was all about. Again, returning to Acts chapter 4, it tells us that the early disciples and the apostles of the church, they, they cried out to the Lord with all of their hearts, as maybe many of you have been during this, this time of this uh, COVID crisis. And uh, as they, they prayed, it tells us in Acts chapter 4, verse 21, the place where they were assembled, it was shaken, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. And this is needed today, that we might speak up and, and preach this word with boldness and know that God might shake us. And yes, there is a special blessing, of course, when we're able to come together personally to worship the Lord God, because God, we know, is a God in the Old Testament who symbolically dwelt with his people. He tabernacled with his people in the tabernacle. It was the, the, the Lord who symbolically was there during the wilderness wanderings and in the future in Solomon's day in the temple in the very holy of holies. Again, not that God is contained in a certain uh, box or, or the, the Ark of the Covenant that was in the middle of the holy of holies, of course, for he is the creator of the ends of the earth. He's awesome and, and mighty, almighty. But it was a symbolic presence of, of a holy God with his people. And as the people they came to worship, they came humbly and reverently. And, and at times God revealed himself in special ways. His, his Shekinah glory came. Remember Moses in Exodus chapter 40. It tells us as, as everything in the tabernacle was complete according to what God had instructed. The cloud covered the tabernacle. And the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And Moses was not able to enter the tabernacle meeting because the cloud rested upon it and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And whenever the cloud was taken from the tabernacle, the children of Israel would go on their journeys. And if the cloud was not taken up, they would not journey until the day it was taken up. Well, maybe we... Maybe we weigh down with the glory of God. Might we, we look to the Lord for each and every single step of the way. Not rushing on before or lagging behind, but, but walking on as the Lord directs us in the fellowships of Machra Mason and Kilfenan as we seek to go forward and wait patiently for the Lord. 
I thank God, God's a God who guides us. Jesus says, where two or three of us meet together in his name, he says, there I am. And I am with them. And you see, this leads to praise. Verse 4 says in Psalm 84, Blessed are those who dwell in your house, who are ever singing your praise. And in verse 3, with this lovely little thought that the, the psalmist brings about the sparrow and the, the swallow. You know how much have been made about the birds in these days of lockdown. I know I've really noticed the bird song so much more than ever. And maybe you've been the same. As you saw the birds in their flight and their feeding and their nesting. And I have a study just across the way here. And I can look out my study and I see the, the, the birds uh, coming up and, and uh, resting in the chimney. The old chimney at the side of the church here. And it's lovely just to, to sit and, and to watch the, the, the birds as they go about. And so here in verse 3 it tells us the sparrow finds a home and the swallow a nest that she may lay her young even at the altars of the Lord of hosts, my King and my God. James Montgomery Boyce, the Bible commentator, says at verse 3, the poet simply saw birds at the temple. And his point was that as the birds made their home at the temple, so they were secure with no fear of their enemies. So may the people of God make their home in God and find security in Him. Later on we're reminded that the Lord God is our sun, He is our light, and He is our shield, He is our defence from the darkness and the oppression of the enemy. But let's think of these sparrows and of these swallows. The, the sparrow in the Bible is a symbol for something really that is, is quite worthless. In uh, Jerusalem, boys would have caught sparrows and they would have sold them, we're told, for a farthing, for the lowest common denominator, a little copper coin, for some pocket money, we might say. And yet, although the sparrow is, is seen as, as really quite worthless, they're not overlooked by the psalmist in Psalm 84. Indeed, they, they make a, a nest for themselves at God's altar. And as again Margaret read for us earlier from Matthew 10, Jesus, after his challenge to be faithful in proclaiming the gospel, he reminds us that God cares for each and every sparrow. Jesus says, not one of them falls to the ground apart from your Father's will. Jesus says, therefore do not fear. You are of more value than many sparrows. Here's the hope, maybe you need to hear this message this morning. The sparrow that God cares for, the worthless sparrow. Yes, in a sense we can say we're worthless sinners. But God cares for us. God knows your situation. God cares for you. God loves you. God calls worthless sinners to, the, to, to look at the cross, to come to Christ, to find our worth in Him. As Emma reminded us in her children's address of the love of God that so so incomprehensible and, and, and the, the love of God that comes to, to win our sinful hearts. And here's this demonstration of God for uh, those who maybe feel worthless. Maybe you feel like that this morning. You, you feel worthless and no one cares. God cares. Jesus died for you. And then the swallow. If the sparrow is a sign of worthlessness in the scriptures, well, the swallow is a sign of restlessness. Have you ever watched the swallow? It's always on the go from dawn to dusk and, and sweeping back and forward through the air forcibly. And it can even weary the watcher as you watch a swallow move. But when it comes to time for mating and for the raising of its young, the swallow will settle down and find a place of rest and peace. Again here the, the psalmist notes it's in the, the temple courts of the Lord. It's a place of security where she can lay her young. 
And the picture here is of the restless soul in the world outside of God and going from pillar to post but never really able to settle because of this problem of sin that separates us from a holy God. But compare this to the child of God who knows eternal rest and peace in the Lord Jesus Christ. St. Augustine said, Our hearts are restless until they find their rest in thee. Have you found your rest in God? Have you made your peace with God? Are you still restless and wandering a lost soul on that awful highway to hell? Or have you heeded the voice of God? And even through this message this morning, God calls to your heart and Remind you of the swallow that can find rest near the altar of God. We find rest again at the cross of Christ. And we're saved by God's good grace. Nothing that we do, but all of the grace of God. Jesus says, come unto me, all ye that labour and are heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn, to, learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your soul, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And oh, when by grace we have been saved and we've come to know Christ, surely we can sing with all of our hearts with the psalmist in Psalm 84, verse 1. How lovely is thy dwelling place, O Lord of hosts to me. Our God is a personal God who brings salvation to the soul. And it leads to praise and joy. And it leads to service. And that's why these Korahites doing their menial tasks, they give all praise and, and uh, uh, singing to God. And they, they could say later on, I'd rather be a doorkeeper and only stay a day than to dwell in the tents of wickedness and have to stay away. But we'll come back to these thoughts, God willing, next Sunday. So as we wait not just for a return to our meeting houses, but let's return to the Lord God with all of our hearts. Let's know that the eternal dwelling place of God is in heaven. And that's the promised destination for the child of God. As I read from Revelation 21 at the beginning of the service, I end with the same words. We're here again, John reminds us, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them and be his people, and God himself will be their God. In heaven, in the new heavens and the new earth, John goes on to say that he saw no temple there, no tabernacle in the city, for the temple is the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb, speaking of Jesus. In conclusion, our God and his Christ, they are enough. Enough for you, enough for me, enough for all who might heed the word this morning. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Lord, we thank you that you're a God who graciously comes to dwell with us. Lord, we realise that we often fail you and fall in sin and we yet thank you as we come in repentance that you meet us at the point of our need. But we thank you like the sparrow and the swallow, we can find eternal rest and security and safety in Christ. And we pray that he might have the preeminence, all the praise, the honour and the glory as we say indeed, how lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts to me. And may our souls and our beings long after you and give you praise for you are the living God, as we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, the Kilfenning Choir are going to lead us in our final concluding praise this morning. Love the vine, all love success. Let's praise God together.
And now may the love of God and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit remain with each and every one and every home this day and indeed forevermore until you call or come, Lord Jesus. Amen. <laughs>